Hi, this is Spencer with USA Guard Services. I'm here with my three degree of freedom robotic arm. And in this video, I'm actually only going to use two of the degrees of freedom. So I'm not going to use the, um, the horizontally mounted servo at the bottom. I'm just going to use the upper two servos. So I call this servo two. I call this servo three. And my goal will be to have the tip um, reach this point that I've marked on the surface of the desk 120 millimeters away from the, the center of the origin, the base of the robotic arm. So to do that, I'm going to do some calculations uh, so we can determine what rotation angle will be needed for the two servos I'm using. And then I'll also show the, the code that I'll plug those angles into, and then we'll go try and see how close I get to that point. To start, I want to define points on the robot and show measurements that I took. At the base of the robot on the tabletop is the origin, point zero zero, and then 120 millimeters to the right of that point is the, the aim point. So this is where I want the tip of the robot to hit. Uh, then there's point S1. Point S1 is actually where servo 2 pivots from and is directly above the origin, 96 millimeters up. There's point S2. Point S2 is where servo 3 pivots from. This is actually um, 9 uh, millimeters uh, in the negative direction, so to the left. Um, and then 162 millimeters up. And then there's point S3, which is the tip of the robotic arm. It's uh, 23 millimeters to the right, so 23 millimeters in the X direction and 299 millimeters up. All right, something that we'll be using um, in this video is the Pythagorean theorem because uh, we want to know the, the distances between these points. So um, we have two legs of a right triangle, A and B. We have the hypotenuse H. Um, H squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then we can solve for H. We take the square root of the terms on the right. And H equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, now like I said, I want to know the distance between the, the different points, and because I only have the x and y coordinates, I'll need to use the Pythagorean theorem to get um, the distance of the hypotenuses. So for this lower triangle, um, it's uh, 66 millimeters in the y direction, and it's 9 millimeters in the x direction. So 9 squared plus 66 squared, and then taking the square root gives about 67. For this upper triangle, uh, the x uh, distance is 32 millimeters. The y distance is 137 millimeters. And this is from uh, just subtracting the different um, coordinates on the slide above. So uh, the square root of 137 plus the square root of 32. You square that and you get about 141 is the, uh, the distance of this hypotenuse H3. Well, I also want to know the, uh, the angles of these triangles and to do that I'm going to use uh, the sine function. So uh, the sine of any angle is the um, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if we take this angle right here, um, the opposite side would be this side up here, the 32. The hypotenuse is this side right here, the the 141. But uh, we actually already have the distances of the sides. We don't have the angle, so we're going to have to use the um, the inverse of the sine, which is can be written as a sine, 
and then a sine of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is equal to the, uh, the angle. So for this uh, upper triangle, it's actually this angle I'm interested in, which is the same as, um, as this angle, uh, just the, um, the same triangle flipped over the, the hypotenuse. So uh, using this a sine equation, a sine of the opposite side, so 32, or the hypotenuse 141 equals 13 degrees. So this angle right here is uh, 13 degrees. And then for the bottom triangle, the uh, again, we're using a sine. So the opposite side is 9. The hypotenuse is 67. So a sine 9 over 67 is equal to 8 degrees. And this is something you can put into your, um, if you have a scientific calculator, you can do this. You have to make sure that you're in degrees and not um, radians. And what this is telling me is that the, um, the air in servo 2 right here is about 8 degrees. So I should probably back up and go to um, go to the first slide. So ideally with this robotic arm, with um, each of the um, each of the linkages in their neutral position, I would want them to be uh, straight vertical. So I would want point S2 to be directly over um, S1, but it's not. In reality, it's about nine millimeters um, to the left of it. And then um, for the, um, the point at the top, um, you know, it's 23 millimeters to the right. So I need to figure out what the, uh, what the angles are um, that they're actually at since they're not directly stacked on top of each other. So, um, like I said, for the bottom triangle, the servo two, uh, instead of being directly vertical, it's actually leaning eight degrees to the, the left. And then if um, the top triangle, servo three, were um, in line with servo two, uh, if it didn't have any air, it would be pointing off in this direction. So it'll go over here. So not only is it not um, pointed in that direction, it's actually you know leaning over to the right. It's leaning over to the right by 13 degrees. So it's this eight degrees that's leaning over to get to vertical, plus the 13 degrees it's leaning to the right. And you find out that servo three has a total air of 22 degrees. When a robotic arm is hitting our aim point it's going to look something like this um, diagram at the, the top. So the servo two and the first linkage are going to be rotated uh, a certain amount to the right, which we're seeing right here. And then uh, servo three and that top linkage will also be rotated to the right and it'll be going down to the, uh, the tabletop. So the way that we're going to um, determine the, the angles that we need for these servos, we're first going to solve for this point that it's at the, um, uh, at the junction between the, the first linkage and the second linkage. So this elbow right here, this is the point that we're going to, to solve for. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem again and we're going to write the uh, Pythagorean theorem for the first triangle. And we're going to write the Pythagorean theorem for the, the second triangle. And we're going to solve for, uh, for both. So for the, uh, the first triangle, uh, I'm calling the, the x um, leg x and the y leg y. Uh, we know the uh, length of the, the linkage hasn't changed when the, the arm 
uh, rotates to the right, it's still uh, 67. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that uh, 67 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So that's what I've written here. And then um, for this next um, triangle, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, again, we know that the length of the arm, 141 degrees, excuse me, 141 millimeters, hasn't changed when the arm rotated. So the hypotenuse is 141 squared. And then we have the, uh, the x dimension, which uh, the point that we're trying to hit is um, on the tabletop, it's 120, excuse me, 120 millimeters from the origin, um, but we're not covering the entire distance with this triangle. We're only covering uh, the 120 millimeters, but we're subtracting this X piece of it because this isn't part of the second triangle. So it's 120 minus X, all of this squared, plus the Y component squared. And then if you remember from some of the, the diagrams above, this point right here, I'm calling S1Y, is 96 millimeters above the, the tabletop. The tip right here, this junction point, um, includes that 96 millimeters, but it also includes this Y distance right here. So this is 96 plus Y. So for the Y component of this triangle, it's 96 plus y, and then all of this is squared. Um, so right here, I have uh, two equations and two unknowns. So using algebra, we'll be able to solve for this x and y coordinate. And then from there, we'll go back and get the angles. Now we're gonna grind through the algebra. And I have to admit, the first time I did this, I got stuck. So I went to an online equation solver and uh, that helped a lot. Uh, this one uh, symbol lab equation calculator uh, worked really well. So if you need some help solving an equation, I recommend that. So from the previous slide, we know that for the first triangle, uh, 67 squared equals X squared plus Y squared. We're gonna go ahead and solve for x. The first step, we'll subtract y squared from 67 squared, we get this, and then we'll uh, take the square root of both sides, that um, eliminates the square on the x, and we get that x equals the square root of 67 squared minus y squared. Uh, to refresh our memory for the second triangle, the equation was 141 squared equals 120 minus x, all squared, plus 96 plus y squared. So we're going to go ahead and plug this uh, in for x in the equation for the second triangle. Uh, we end up getting this, 141 squared equals 120 minus the square root of 67 squared minus y squared and then this whole term right here is squared and then plus 96 plus y squared. Now we're going to uh, expand to get rid of these two squares. Uh, so we square the 120. Uh, we'll also multiply 120 times this square root term multiply it by 2, uh, that comes out to negative 240 times the square root term. And then uh, we'll square the square root term, which gets rid of the, the square root. So we just end up with what's inside, which is the 67 squared minus y squared. And then we're also going to expand this piece, which is 96 plus and that's 96 times y times 2, which equals 192y, and then square this y, so it's plus y squared. All right, now we have both y squared plus, y squared negative, and that allows us to uh, eliminate the y squared, and that's what you see here 
in this uh, line. Next, we're going to do three things. We're going to isolate this square root term uh, by itself, um, I guess including the negative 240, on the left uh, by itself. We're going to uh, square all the squared numbers, and we're going to consolidate the, the terms. So we'll uh, add um, 240 times the square root term to both sides. That eliminates it on the right-hand side and uh, creates a positive 240 times the square root term on the, uh, the left-hand side. I will also go ahead and square the 141, the 120, the 67, and the 96. We'll um, subtract the 141 squared term from both sides, so it will remove it from the left and we'll add it, it'll be in the negative on the right. And after we're done with all that, uh, it looks like uh, this. So 240 times the square root of 67 squared minus y squared is equal to 192y plus 8,220. Now we want to get rid of the square root. To do that, we're going to square both sides. Uh, 240 squared is 57,600. Uh, when we square the square root term, it goes away, and we just have the 67 squared minus y squared. And then on the um, on the right hand side, 192 squared is 36,900 times y squared, and then uh, 192 times 8,220 times 2. Um, y is 3.16 times 10 to the 6y, and then the 8,220 squared is 6.76 times 10 to the 7. When we expand that, uh, we get that um, 2.59 times 10 to the 8 minus 57,600 times y squared is equal to 36,900y squared plus 3.16 times 10 to the 6y plus 6.76 times 10 to the 7. We want to move all the terms to the right hand side and we end up with 0 equals 94,500 times y squared plus 3.16 times 10 to the 6. Um, there's actually a y here. My uh, um, my fault with this uh, this slide minus 1.91 times 10 to the 8th. Now we're going to use the quadratic equation. So if you're unfamiliar with this or you need a refresher, uh, the quadratic equation states that when 0 equals a x squared plus b x plus c, then x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So for the equation we have, and again, remember there's a missing uh, y right here, we have that the a term is 94,500, the b term is 3.16 times 10 to the 6, and the c term is negative 1.91 times 10 to the 8. We plug that into the quadratic equation and we get that y is equal to negative 3.16 times 10 to the 6 plus or minus the square root of 3.16 times 10 to the 6 squared minus 4 times 94,500 times negative 1.91 times 10 to the 8. Uh, all that is over 2 times 94,500 and we find out that y is either equal to um, 31.3 or negative 64.7. Um, several slides ago, we uh, had solved for x to be equal to the square root of 67 squared minus y squared. If we plug these two y's in, we get that x is equal to uh, 58.2 or 17.4.
uh, it's actually the uh, the y equals 31.3 and 58.2 um, that's the the case that I'm really looking for that's what matches the uh, diagrams that uh, that I've shown I think it's that reflected on itself is the, uh, the opposite ones that we're getting now that we've solved for X and Y we can figure out the sides of uh, both of these triangles so we solve that X is equal to 58 and that Y is equal to 31 uh, we know that uh, this point right here is actually um, 96 um, millimeters above the the tabletop so 96 plus 31 is 127 that's our s2y and then um, we know that at this point right here is the aim point is 120 degrees in the x we know that s2x is 58 so 120 minus 58 is equal to uh, 62 So now with that uh, information, we're able to, um, I guess with the information we had before, we're able to solve for uh, this angle, which is um, the inverse sine, A sine, of the opposite, which is uh, 31, or the hypotenuse, which is 67. Plugging that into my calculator, and I get that this angle is 28 degrees. For this angle right here, uh, we do a sine of the opposite side, which is 62, or the hypotenuse, which is 141. We get that this angle is 26 degrees. So we saw before that this is 28 degrees. This is uh, 26 degrees so um, with the robotic arm this is the the linkage for servo 2 so this is 28 degrees if the um, second linkage the servo 3 linkage if that was in line with it it would continue to go on up at 28 degrees but it's not, it's pointed down in this direction. So I know that this is a right angle, so it's equal to 90. So this angle right here is 90 degrees minus the 26 degrees, so it's 66 degrees. I know that this angle is 28 degrees, so I just solved for it right there. So uh, combining both of those, so for this combined angle, it's 66 degrees plus 28 degrees is equal to 94 degrees. So this is a reminder from a previous slide that the servo 2 uh, linkage is actually uh, kind of leaning 8 degrees to the, the left. So for the arm to get all the way to 28 degrees, it's going to have to go an additional 8 degrees. So instead, just going down to 28 degrees, it's going to be 28 minus 8. So servo 2 is going to have to go all the way to uh, 20 degrees. And then um, we also had talked about how um, servo 3 is 8 degrees plus 13 degrees, um, I guess, off of being in line with servo 2. So that's 22 degrees that servo 3 is off from the angle of uh, servo 2. So we'd solved in the previous slide that that angle of servo 3 was 94 degrees, um, but um, it's already its starting position is off by 22 degrees. So 94 minus 20 degrees equals 72 degrees for the servo 3 position. Hi. Now to, um, I guess, make it uh, a little more uh, confusing. The two servos are actually um, upside down. 
from one another. So this is where servo three is, and the way it rotates, all the way to the left is zero degrees, the neutral position is 90 degrees, and all the way to the right is 180 degrees. So um, when servo three pivots to the right, uh, its value is gonna increase. So it will be 90 plus 72 is gonna equal 162 degrees. So what we're gonna put in the code is that we want servo three to go to 162 degrees. For uh, servo two, it goes the other way. All the way to the right is zero degrees. The neutral position is 90 degrees. All the way to the left is 180 degrees. So we want servo two to get smaller so it's going to be at that 20 degrees that we solved for. So I open the Arduino software, and here's what my code looks for. And I have to uh, say up front, I'm not that proficient with coding, so my explanation is probably not going to be that detailed. So we're using the Servo H library. We're identifying servos 1, 2, and 3. We're not actually using servo 1 um, in, this, um, in this code. Uh, the integer servo position, I'm going to set it initially at 90. Uh, for my setup, um, these are the, the pins. So pin 9 for servo 1, pin 6 for servo 2, uh, pin 3, excuse me, pin 5 for servo 3. Uh, this is just how the robot is set up. Um, initially writing... Um, the position of servo one, two, and three, so that angle to the variable servo position. Uh, we're not using the serial begin in this code. This is a one second uh, delay. And then here is my, my loop that's going to um, lean the robotic arm over to the right and hopefully get close to that uh, point that I marked on the piece of paper on the tabletop. So the first uh, loop is that for servo position, uh, initially being set to 90, uh, as long as it's greater than 20, uh, the servo position is gonna go down by one. So it's gonna go from 90 to 89 to 88, and so on to uh, 22, 21, and it'll stop at 20. And then we're gonna write servo 2 to servo position. So what I'm saying here is that servo uh, number 2 is going to go to the angle that this variable servo position is. So 90 is the neutral position and it's going to tick down to 20 degrees like we saw for in the, the calculations. And between every one degree move there's going to be a 10 millisecond pause. Um, we won't notice that during the, um, when the arm is moving, uh, but that is going to slow it down enough that it's not just going to crash um, from one position to another. After servo two moves, we're going to have a one second delay, and then servo three is going to move. So the, the loop for servo three is initially set to 90, it's going to, as long as it's less, the variable is less than 162, it's going to continue to tick up uh, by one. So this for statement goes down by one uh, for each time. This for statement goes up by one. Um, and then we're going to write this uh, angle variable to servo three. So because Servo 3 is uh, was installed kind of opposite of Servo 2. It's going to uh, tick upward as it turns in the, um, I guess from our vantage point, the, the clockwise direction. They're both turning clockwise. Again, a 10 millisecond uh, delay between each tick. Um, at this point, we're hoping that the arm is close to that aim point, and we're going to wait five seconds we can get a good look and see how well we did and then um, we want to return the arm to its original position so i'm going to um, first move servo three back to its uh, original position at least original position relative to servo two 
So we're going to start out with the variable servo position being equal to 162 as long as it is um, greater than um, 90 we're going to tick down um, by one degree and then we're going to write that variable for the angle to servo 3 again a 10 second excuse me, 10 millisecond delay between each pulse and um, once servo 3 has moved all the way we'll have a one second delay and then finally we're going to move servo 2 back to its original position so with the servo position variable equal to 20 as long as servo position is less than or equal to 90 we're going to tick up uh, by one degree we're going to write that to the servo 2 uh, again we'll have the 10 millisecond delay between each degree movement and then once we're back in the original position we'll have a five second uh, pause now i'm going to click on this arrow to upload the code to the robotic arm okay moment of truth let's see how close we get if we are really anywhere near the aim point with these theoretical calculations i'll be i'll be pretty happy Just waiting for the upload to be complete. And we're, we're pretty close. Looks to me like we're landing about uh, five, maybe six millimeters uh, beyond that 120 millimeter uh, point. So I'm pretty happy with that. You know, now I know the, uh, the air I could use to uh, to calibrate that and um, make more accurate pr um, predictions in the future. Thanks for watching this video. The reason that I'm working with robotics is that I want to automate the gutter cleaning process in order to reduce ladder fall deaths and injuries. You can help me in this effort. On the next slide, I'm going to show a list of items that I need. If you have these items and are willing to give them away, please give me a call. Thank you.